We saw this last episode. 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 And now we're here! Hey guys, it's Tomation. Welcome back to some more Pokemon Leaf Green. In the last episode, which the little flashbacks there didn't remind us of at all, we made it onto Route 3, battled some trainers, and we caught ourselves a new team member, a Conite here with the Night Around Male, which I miraculously managed to catch in my final Pokeball. The B button works, I'm telling you. In this episode, we'll be entering Mount Moon. Welcome to Mount Moon. The music in here sounds creepy, which I guess is kind of fitting since this place is basically one big cave. This is the first major cave dungeonish area in the game, so expect to see a lot of rock types and a lot of Zubats. Zubat is a Zubat is a bat type Pokemon. Well, not bat type Pokemon. You know, like bat like Pokemon. So they usually like to flood around all the caves, and they're extremely common. So expect to see a lot of those. They're flying poison types, so I'll try to talk more about them when we actually find one. Right now though, there's a Geodude in front of our face. We saw a lot of these things inside of the Pewter City Gym. They're rock and ground type Pokemon. It's really high defense, as you saw there. Even from my evolved Charmeleons, like, I am... I'm nine levels higher than this thing, and my Metal Claw from an evolved Pokemon still couldn't one-hit KO this thing. That's just how defensive Geodude is. So if you want to catch one of them, add them to your team. I'd highly recommend it. They're really offensive, really defensive, but unfortunately, in order to get their final evolution, you do need someone to trade with, which I know not everyone has, and link cables are really rare nowadays. So you have TM09 Bullet Seed here. Bullet Seed is a really weak grass type move. I wouldn't really recommend putting it on any of your Pokemon. And here's a Zubat now. Zubat's a really, like, really fast um, poison flying type. It's Final Evolution Crobat, which I'm pretty sure is in this game since this is technically a third generation game of remake of the original games. It's Final Evol Evolution Crobat is one of the fastest Pokemon in the game. It also has really good attack stat and really good moves to take advantage of with its typing of Poison and Flying. Alright, I can't go up to level 7. Suspicious, suspicious men are in the cave. What about you? Well, why is there a bug catcher in the cave? What kind of bug Pokemon do you find? Do you expect to be finding in here? Well, I guess there's a bug type Pokemon later on, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. And yeah, your Weedle is bug type, so Peck is actually super effective, and Poison Sting isn't very effective on me. This could be convenient. Yeah, it's not doing too much damage, but I'm actually pretty sure Conite can actually take out this Weedle. So he gets used Mirror in his very first battle. Since he's obviously weaker than a lot of the wild Pokemon and trainer Pokemon you'll find in this area, his power doesn't really come off right right now, but when he starts leveling up and starts evolving, yeah, he's a powerful little thing. One more pack. And there goes a Weedle. Good job. And we'll learn Focus Energy. Focus Energy is a bit of a setup move. When you use it, it makes it more it makes it more likely for you to get a critical hit, which is useful. Unfortunately, in the very first games, I know for a fact in the very first Pokemon games, it actually didn't do as it said. Instead, it decreased your chance of getting a critical hit, so it was a really awful move in those games. Thankfully, though, it's fixed here. So, let's use that. Now, notice Kakuna then just did Harden. And since Peck is a physical type, or a physical move, that's going to probably not do as much as it would have. But if we get a critical hit, it negates all stat increases. So, those Hardens didn't matter for it in the end. Now, if I can just get one more critical hit, I'll be able to take out this Kakuna. And the game refuses to give it to me. So you can see with all those defense buffs, even though Peck is a super effective move, it's not doing so much since it's gotten all defense raises. But nothing critical hits can't solve. And that's a lot of experience for a Conite to get. Getting up to level 9. And barely missed level 10. Alright. Oh, 
There's an item up here. Paralyze heal. Not too bad. This one's level 10. I'm just gonna take this out with uh, Dynamo so I can't I can get it to level 10. And then I'm probably gonna spray Repel. Astonish. Astonish is ghost type movement as it has a chance to make your Pokemon flinch. If your Pokemon flinches, it basically gets it just misses out on attacking for a turn. Meat Slice is a bug type move that drains your hit points and restores the opposing Pokemons. Thankfully, it's a really weak move, so it doesn't do too much damage. Zubat, you're an ineffective vampire bat. And a Konite gets up to level 10. So I think it's about time to spray Repel, because I don't want to be bombarded by Zubats every 5 step us I take. It's a shame they're so expensive right now. What? I'm waiting for my friends to find me here. I think your friends ditched you, and they want you to starve in this cave for the rest of your life. Best friends forever. Last Iris has a Kaferi, alright. Um, I don't feel safe taking this thing out with a Conite. This thing might have Sing now that I think about it, and that would suck. So I don't want to switch out to Spyro or Dynamo, because if anything's going to go to sleep. No offense, Conite, but I feel like you're probably not too useful. And, damn it, double clicked. That was right, it does have Sing, but thankfully it's missing a lot. That's convenient. Alright. Can I get a critical, please? Nope. Double slap. Triple slap. Oh yes, I poisoned it. That's always good. So now you're gonna take damage from poison every turn, Clefairy. Oh god, you got critical. Don't hit me again. Ah. Well, there's my first fainted Pokemon. So let's play. Shouldn't be too big of an issue, though. I can just leave this cave to go heal up uh, Hakonite. Conveniently placed Pokemon Center right outside. The fairy has really high defenses. I just realized that. That was a critical hit from Dynamo. Alright. Poison takes you out. And that would have been nice to have on Hakonite. I lost. You lost your friends as well. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna leave to heal really quickly. Alright. Healed up Dynamo, and time to make more progress in this cave. Or not Dynamo, Akonite. Oh yeah, and I forgot I had Akonite up front actually. Repels only work if the Pokemon at the front of your party is stronger than the wild Pokemon. So it'd probably be a good idea to put Dynamo at the front for now. Alright, we have a ladder there that's going down. Repel were off. That's inconvenient. They're so expensive, I wasn't able to buy like a crazy amount to get through here. Oh, and you just had to stop me. Oh, well, this is something interesting. I was planning on skipping this fight, but this guy has a Magnemite. The Magnemite is a steel and electric type Pokemon. And steel is a really awkward type for this point in the game. It resists a lot of attacks, it was, it's completely immune to poison type. Um, most of your normal type moves like Quick Attack and Tackle are not very effective on it. A really good way to take out Magnemite if you chose Charmander is use Ember. Steel type Pokemon are weak against fire type moves. So, having Spyro here is a great way to take out Magnemites. And he also has a Voltorb, which is just a pure electric type. This guy has some interesting Pokemon. Chances are while I go through this place, I'm probably just going to skip out most of the boring uh, Lass and Bug Trainer put, um, battles, because you already know what they have. I don't feel the need to show those off. It'll just be me killing a bunch of bugs, pretty much. Charge, that makes your electric type attacks more powerful. And you seem content to keep doing it. Alright then. Keep powering up the attack you're never going to use. Good battle strategy.
All right, now I can get this item. All that for a potion. Uh, wasn't worth it. Rare candy, now that's more like it. Rare candies will increase the level of your Pokemon by one every time you use it. And an escape rope. That'll get you out of the current dungeon area you're in. I don't think this guy battles me. Hi, I'm excavating po I'm ex excavating. Wow. For fossils here under Mount Moon. Sometimes Brock of Pewter Gym lends me a hand. So we find out Brock likes to come to this place to train probably. I'm gonna try and avoid most of the trainers here that I don't have to fight. Alright. So now we're done this ladder on the basement floor. And we're going down even deeper. What's this? Men dressed in black outfits. Eh, they're probably just innocent people. TM46 Thief. What could be going on here? But can't I open the front? We're pulling a big job here. Get lost, kid. So. Oh my god, Team Rocket's in the cave. Who would have guessed? This is our first encounter with a Team Rocket Grunt. Team Rocket Grunt's usually a Pokemon like Zubat and Raditz is on their team. So they're not too hard to take down. Oh, and I just had to flinch, alright. Make things awkward, why don't you? Can I just get on my focus energy, please? Thank you. Zubat's leech life since the bug type move isn't very effective on a Conine. So I feel pretty safe to try and take this thing out. Supersonic, though, that's an annoying move. Supersonic will confuse your Pokemon, and confusion makes it so your Pokemon sometimes has a chance to hit themselves in confusion. And that's not something you want. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to be able to attack then. Oh, come on. Knowing my luck, I'm probably going to hit myself in confusion now. Flinch twice, hit myself in confusion. No? Alright. The game is being... And I get a critical hit. Alright, that makes up for it. The game is being nice now. I like that. Akanai gets up level 11. I like that as well. And you have an Ekans. I am going to stay in for this so I get some experience, but then switch out. Yeah, I don't want to stay in after being, after being intimidated. That would not be smart. Zap. Zap. No poison? Okay. And kick you in the face. Dynamo gets up level 17. And I'm pretty sure... Okay, maybe it's 18. So, you are good. If you find a fossil, give it to me and scram. Ah, uh, no thanks. So on this rock here, there's an ether. Ether will store your power points for your Pokemon's moves. I meant to put Spyro back in the front of the party. There we go. So I didn't actually talk about the Pokemon you can find in Mount Moon. There are Geodudes, there are Zubats, and I'm pretty sure you actually also have a rare chance of finding Clefairies. Clefairies are normal type Pokemon. They're not too powerful, but they do get the move Sing, which can put your opponents to sleep. And Clefairies evolve into Clefables using the Moonstone I just picked up, so you can have a fully evolved Pokemon really early on in the game, actually. And in these sort of passageway... Well, actually, let me see if I can find one now. In these sort of um, lower down corridor areas, there's another Pokemon you can find, which you can't find on the upper floors. Which is this thing, Paris. Paris is a grass and bug type Pokemon, so it's four times weak against fire. But they're actually eight times weak against fire because of its ability dry skin. 
I'm pretty sure Paris is in this place. If you use a water type move on them, they'll regain hit points, but if you use a fire type move, they take extra damage from it. So yeah. Ember We just murdered that thing. Yeah, that was complete overkill. The grass and bug type Pokemon, they're not really that good of a grass type Pokemon. I'd probably suggest catching something else later on in the game. Something like a Bell Sprout or an Execute or an Execute will probably be better. And they're all over the place on these bomb floors, so if you want one, they're not too hard to find. Alright. Now we're way down here on the very bottom floor of Mount Moon. And there's a lot of rocket grunts everywhere. Let me see if I can use my amazing Pokemon Trainer stealth skills and sneak past them all. Metal Gear Leaf Green. Oh, can you look that way, please? Not you, Repel. Hey, look, a shiny, shiny object on the wall over there. Go look at it. Look at him. Shut up, dude. Look at the thing on the... Whatever, I'll fight you. Reviving Pokemon, you're crazy. All the Team Rocket Grunts have names. They're all just called Grunt. Or maybe Grunt is their name. That'll be a really crappy name. On the Team Rocket um, form thing where you apply, it just says, What's your name? And if it's anything aside from Grunt, you don't get accepted in. How about that? That would make a lot of sense. I guess Jesse and James from the anime wouldn't really fit in then. Ratatown is Zubat. No surprise there. Zubat, Raditas, yeah, they're pretty much the standard Team Rocket Pokemon. You may see some Mechans and some more Coughings later on. Er, now I'm mad. He's mad. He's gonna punch us in the face. Okay. Anything behind you? Yep, we have a scientist here. And I'm actually going to put Econi up in the front. Because I still need to train him up. Hey, stop. I found these fossils. They're both mine. So we have a battle with a scientist here. Because this guy found some fossils and he doesn't want to share. Or a super nerd. Super nerd and scientist. Is there really a difference there? I guess scientists have to do with science, but super nerds are kind of like really smart, and scientists are really smart, so they're kind of the same thing, except I guess scientist is a job and super nerd is just more of a hobby. Eh, whatever. Grimer! Grimer is a poison type Pokemon. Grimer is really defensive, actually. I'm pretty sure he has pretty high um, special defense. So, chance all this Thundershot won't take you down in one hit. Nowhere close. Poison gas, that's a really disgusting move. And I'm pretty sure that poisons you every time. No getting me with this time, alright. Thankfully though, I have an antidote so I can heal up that poison. I didn't end up needing the antidote when I was going through a Viridian Forest, where is it? Oh wait, did I get poisoned before this and use it? God damn it. Oh yeah, cause I was, yeah, while I was doing my training, I got poisoned by a Weedle inside of Viridian Forest. And I used my antidote then. Ah well. Something tells me Dynamo isn't gonna die in this battle from poison. I will have to deal with the annoying after effects of it after the fight. And uh, never mind. Bye Dynamo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm a terrible trainer. Alright. That does give Akana a chance to take out the grammar though. So he should hopefully get to level um, 13 from that. And we get Double Kick. Double Kick is a fighting type move. And not quite level 13. So, Double Kick being a fighting type move, that'll be super effective on Jigglypuffs and Clefairies that I know are in this area. Also on Steel type Pokemon and Rock types. Hm. How is fighting super effective on Rock? If you punched a Rock, that'd just sort of break your fist, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's not doing too much damage, but I don't actually know if this Voltorb actually has any electro-type moves to take advantage of using Charge Drum. 
So again, I feel like this is a pretty safe matchup here. And yeah, tackle isn't doing really much at all. Kick the ball. Go fetch. And I'm pretty sure this guy's last Pokemon is a Magnemite. No, it's a coughing. Um, hmm. Actually, a Conant's a great choice for this, because coughing has poison gas, and poison-type Pokemon, in case you don't know, poison-type Pokemon cannot be poisoned. Unlike Spyro, who probably get very poisoned. Oh, that's not doing too much damage at all. I forgot poison-type resisted fighting-type moves. Smog would probably have poisoned Spyro, but a Conant resists it. So yeah, Grimer is especially defensive, and Coughing has good physical defense. So it might be a little bit awkward to take him out using Conant. Now, if only I could get more critical hits, that would help out a lot. Come on, critical. Thank you. I'm not going to let a Conant die like I did with my Pikachu, so I'm going to use a potion here. I've sort of been hoarding them up to this point. And there we go. That went a lot better than I expected it to. And Akana gets up to level 14. He had some decent training in this area. Okay, I'll share. We each take a fossil, no being greedy. So here you get to pick what fossil you want. You could either get the dome fossil, or... The Helix Fossil. Praise Lord Helix. If you pick the Helix Fossil, you'll get an Omnite later on in the game. And if you pick the Dome Fossil, you'll get a Kabuto later on in the game. Each of them are rock and water type Pokemon. They're both pretty defensive and both have good physical attack. So choose whichever one you want. I personally am going with the Helix Fossil because Twitch plays Pokemon. Yeah. Is that still going on? I haven't actually checked on that in a while. I think last time I checked, they were playing Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. More importantly, we're on the second half of Route 4. We're reading the sign from the wrong way around. Route 4, Mount Moon to Cerulean City. And up here we have two guys who are facing each other intently. Or intensely. A punch of roaring ferocity. Packed with destructive power. When the chips are down, Mega Punch is the ultimate attack. You agree, yes? Now, let me teach it to your Pokemon. Mega Punch is a really powerful normal type move. It can only be the only ones from this one specific NPC in the game. So, I'm going to... Hmm. I'm going to teach it to Dynamo, actually. I'll get rid of Double Team, because I never planned on using that anyway. It just kind of feels cheap to me. And Dynamo learns Mega Punch. Now we are comrades in the way of punching. Let's go punch everybody in the face. A kick of brutal ferocity, yada yada yada. So the guy on the left teaches you Mega Punch, and this guy will teach you Mega Kick. Mega Kick is even more powerful than Mega Punch, however it has less accuracy, so it's more likely to miss. I'm going to wait off on teaching that actually, because I want to um, teach it to a Conite later on in the game. But I need him to evolve to be able to learn it first. Alright, I'm pretty sure that's all there is to do on Route 4. It seems I had just enough Repel left to get out of Mount Moon. Hidden item, please. Satisfy me. Give me a hidden item, please. Be nice. No. Stupid game. TMO5 Roar is up here. Roar will basically make the opponent... It'll force the opponent to switch out their Pokemon for a different Pokemon. Or if you use it when you're in the middle of, middle of a wild battle, it will end the battle immediately. Alright. Now be very careful when you jump down one of these ledges. Because there's no going back for a, a long time. There's also this grass here. I'm pretty sure you can find Ekans and stuff in this grass. But I'll explain. Or I'll explore later. For now, I just want to get inside of Cerulean City so I can end this episode off. Phew. We'll be exploring this place next time. So, next time on Pokemon Leaf Freedom, we'll be exploring around Cerulean, Cerulean City. Checking out that patch of grass. And going across the Nugget Bridge. See you guys then.